Hello everyone, and welcome to part 4 of how to make Breakout in Unity. So last time, we got our bat moving around, our ball bouncing across the screen, and we have made it so the ball resets to the player's position after it goes below this threshold down here. So now, we're going to implement the block collisions and their destruction. So before we start with the blocks, just want to explain the purpose behind these different colors. Now, different colored blocks are going to require a different amount of hits to destroy them. So red and yellow are going to require one hit, green and cyan are going to require two hits, and then blue and purple are going to require three hits. And the way this is going to work is that when the ball comes in to hit the block, it will shake around in its spot if it has health, and if it doesn't, we're going to destroy the game object, and some particles will show up, and they'll just, like, spread across the screen, and it'll just add a special firework style effect. So let's get started going to bring in one of the red game object blocks into the scene and I want to give it a rigid or a um, box collider. I'm also just going to align it onto the grid and there we go. I'm also just going to delete this one and change the name of the one the uh, red block we're working with to the name red. So now that we have our block here I'm going to add a script, a new script specifically, and this is going to be our block controller. So let's start programming by opening up our script. And I just opened the wrong one. This is the one. Alright, here we are in our block controller script. So this script is basically going to control emitting the particles, tracking the individual block's health, and everything. So what I'm going to start is to declare a private integer for block health. And first, we're just going to assume that you have one health point at the start and then in the start function we are going to figure out which color of block you are. One of the easiest ways to do that is by using tags. So in your inspector panel there's this tag option underneath the game object's name. We want to add a tag and what we're going to do is just give create tags for each and every color. So we have red, blue, green. And what these tags will do is give us the ability to easily figure out which type of game object this is. And from there, we can just initialize the health. So I'll just uh, make sure I got all the tags. All right, got all the tags. And what we're going to do is just tag it to be the same color. And we also, we could have just gave it tags for the number of hits we want it to take, but we also want to customize the color of the particles that are going to be shot out when you destroy the block. And by because of that, we want to have six tags to ensure that the color can match and we have the ability to customize health. So now, let's go into here. Now in our start function, we want to figure out which color of block you are and assign your health accordingly. 
Now the way we're going to figure out which block is which is with a switch statement. And what a switch statement does is look for a condition and checks if that condition has met a certain value and you can make it perform certain actions. So in this case, the what we're looking for is game object dot tag. And our first case is going to be if our game object dot tag is a red one. And you always have to have your a break statement because if you go into your switch statement and without break statements after every case, then it'll just um it'll just keep going down the line and do everything that's in the switch statement, which kind of defeats the purpose of having one. Now if it's red, we want to set our block health to 1. And we want to do that if it's red or yellow. And actually, you can't actually say this. So instead, I'll just copy and paste and create this one called yellow. And the next case is if you have a cyan. Yeah, yeah, it was green and cyan that gives you two health. And the next case was green. And the final case was purple and blue at three health. So just to reiterate what the switch statement is doing, we go in and then tells the computer that we want to check the tag of the game objects. And if the tag is a red one, we're going to set the health to one. And But if it isn't, it'll just keep going. And once it finds a case tag that matches, then it'll set the health and it'll just move on. And that's how it will initialize the health of the blocks. All right, now on to collisions. Now we need an on collision enter 2D and needs to be of type collider. Let me check. Sorry about that. It's of type collision 2D. And then we're just going to name it hit. Now the only thing we need to check for is if this is hit by a game object named ball. And when ball hits it, we want to set our public health or er, our pl block health minus minus. Now just note that I change this variable to a public integer just so we can actually make sure that it's displaying the correct health when we initialize it. So I'm just going to test it. Red, it's 1. And then when I change it to cyan, it becomes 2. And then when I change it to purple, it becomes 3. And now, if I hit it with the ball, let's see if I can do this right, it becomes 2. And then it should be subtracting. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. So it should be subtracting until it gets to 0. But right now, it's not going to do anything until it gets to 0. Which is why... When we hit the game object, we want to subtract the health, and then in this same on collision enter function, we want to check if block health is less than or equal to zero. And if it is, we want to destroy the game object. So, as I said, we're just going to destroy the game object. However, this runs into a bit of an issue. 
because if I can just line this up right, as you can see, it passed through it, but it didn't bounce back. Because of this, we don't want to destroy our block instantly after being touched. Oh, sorry about that. We want to destroy it at least a few frames after. So we want our ball to bounce back and then destroy the game object. Because of this, we should be using on collision exit 2D. And what on collision exit does is this function will be called when it stops being collided with from a certain game object. So let's just cut and paste our if block health is less than or equal to zero and then destroy our game object. And what this will do is make it so our ball runs into our block, bounces off of it, and then we destroy this block. So just to demonstrate that, it flies, gets destroyed, bounces back. Perfect. So I'm just going to change this from private to, or public to private. And now we have the core functionality of breakout complete. We made it so we shoot our block, eh, we shoot our ball, it breaks the block. However, there's still a lot of stuff we can do to improve it. Now, I'm going to need more time to figure out the best approach in order to teach how the particles work. So in the next episode, we are going to implement sound effects for when the ball hits the block, or when the block destroys, actually, when the ball hits the walls or the bat, and for when the block gets destroyed. And any other sound effects that I would like to implement. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this series or suggestions on how to improve this channel, please let me know. And I hope you stay tuned for the next episodes. Goodbye.